could you introduce yourself? Yeah, my uh, name is Leila Neshawati. I'm uh, Spanish and Syrian, and uh, I'm a human rights activist and uh, blogger and uh, professor of uh, communications at uh, Carlos III University in Madrid. And where are we today? We are at Campus Party Brazil, and uh, we're going to have a panel on uh, revolutions and uh, social movements and uh, communications and how citizens are using communications within this uh, revolutionary trend. So I'm going to be speaking about uh, Syria, which is probably the most dramatic uh, case uh, in, in, uh, in the world right now. What is your general view of what's happening in Syria right now? My general view is that finally we are seeing the Syrian regime as what it is. After decades of uh, this government uh, presenting itself as a, as a secular republic, constitutional republic. So now we know that it's a dictatorship. And for the first time we can hear this word on media. We can hear repressive regime, authoritarian regime, dictatorship, which were words that seemed kind of taboo or, or unexistent when we referred to the Middle East and North Africa until very recently. So now this, uh, this wall of silence, of media silence around Syria, that Syria tried to, to maintain, keeping journalists away uh, and uh, isolating its citizens, is broken. So now we can hear citizen voices and we can know what's happening within the country, although, of course, citizens are paying unbelievably high price for it. It seems like the Syrian opposition is very closely connected with supporters abroad and in Western countries. Um, some people have argued that even if the, the opposition figures uh, who are Syrian are sincere, their efforts are really playing into a Western agenda of intervention in the Arab world. We, I, I tend to hear uh, criticism uh, to, to people who support uh, an end of the regime people who press for an end of the regime in Syria and I, I, they're normally, they're often criticized for uh, playing part of the US-Israel agenda but I don't think we should define ourselves in opposition to someone else I think we should define ourselves for our own values our values are universal, our freedom are an end uh, to repression are um, the fact that people can choose their own political representatives. I think that's something universal that we can all agree with. So just because someone else is against a certain government, I'm not going to ally with that government if it's against my values. And I think the Syrian regime is against the values of any human being with empathy with other human beings. But perhaps this is all part of a setup that's going to be used for armed intervention uh, against Syria or maybe just to uh, support regime change in Syria in the hopes that a, a new regime will be installed more friendlier to uh, US imperial aims. I don't think any move by the United States or, or the international community is innocent, it's uh, naive or it doesn't have an agenda behind it. But I don't think that justifies uh, supporting a regime that's not legitimate. So when this regime falls, we'll have to deal with whatever comes afterwards. We'll deal with it. But that does not legitimize retroactively a government that has never been legitimate. And we can see how he, this, uh, this government is butchering peaceful demonstrators, is massacring peaceful demonstrators, is torturing uh, its own people, its own citizens. I don't believe there are many uh, governments in the world they torture others, they kill others, but their own people, it's not that common that we see, it's not that often that we see this level of uh, cruelty against uh, its own population. So whatever happens afterwards and whatever cards uh, international governments try to play on Syria will have to be, we have, we'll have to follow it closely and deal with it. But there's no uh, way peace and democracy can come out of this regime because it's proved that it's inherently unable to produce uh, any response that is not violent to any peaceful expression of its citizens. I, I wonder about the connection between um, the Arab Spring in Syria and support for uh, the Palestinian cause. It seems like in the West there's a tremendous amount of sympathy for the Syrian opposition, but a lot of silence in the face of Palestinian demands for democracy and liberty as well. How do you explain that? 
I think uh, a lot of people understand this, the, the, this. It's a global issue of justice and freedom, and they equally support the Syrian struggle for freedom and the Palestinian struggle for freedom. I think the ones who are confused are the ones who define themselves in opposition to someone else and who see the world in two big blocks, in two big groups, and they don't see nuances, they don't see degrees, they don't see levels, they don't see the complexity. Of, uh, of the relationships, so uh, so I think it's very easy, very simple to decide where you stand uh, just by looking at where your enemy stands. But I don't think that's the right way to do it. You have to have your own values and be with justice, whatever it is. For those of us in the West, should how what advice would you give us if you want to be supportive of Syrian uh, mm -hmm. democracy activists without at the same time? you know, having our status be interpreted as, as part of a Western agenda. Okay, well, I suggest you listen to the Syrian street, because they're asking for specific things. They're asking for isolation of the regime. Uh, some people are asking for military intervention, but not all of them. Many people are asking for diplomatic pressure. I don't think we have uh, uh, done everything that we can do diplomatically. Um, we have not even managed to have uh, Syrian ambassadors in European countries expelled out of the country. So the Spanish is uh, Syrian. Uh, the, the Syrian ambassador in Spain is still in Madrid. So, uh, so this is something that uh, they have been demanding. Actives have been demanding isolation of the regime, uh, no access to the market, to the weapon market, and uh, of course uh, pre pressuring Russia to to isolate this regime as uh, illegitimate as it is. What are the websites of the Syrian opposition that we should be paying attention to? I'm assuming here uh, English language websites that we would, we would do well to check out. There's the Syrian Revolution page on Facebook. That's a good way to, to stay updated on what's happening. There are different uh, Twitter users that you can follow, like Syria Parliament, or like Alexander Page Syria, and uh, Alexander Page C on Twitter. And if you uh, post uh, Syria and Free Syria on Twitter as a tag, you'll find a list of people who are very prominent, well-known uh, Syrians who are speaking about what's happening, many of them under pseudonyms. But the good thing about Twitter is that it allows you to use a fake name and that's okay, so you can protect yourself and your identity. And uh, I'd suggest you look for organizations in your community that are sending aid to refugees. It's a very dramatic situation of refugees in Turkey, and uh, a lot of organizations are moving uh, to, to make sure uh, help gets to these people. And uh, contacting your political representatives and asking them why this uh, inconsistency between supporting uh, human rights in certain contexts and not in others. Thank you very much. You're welcome.